Welcome to the Swim Swam Podcast. I'm your host, Coleman Hodges. Joining us today, newly crowned two-time world champion in the 50 back and the 400 free relay straight from Budapest, coming to us live from Mission Viejo right now. We're sitting down with Justin Ress. How's it going, man? What's up? It's going well. It's going well. Adjusting to uh, American life again. <laughs> yeah how how has the adjustment been uh just coming back are you able to do, did you get much jet lag coming back from budapest yeah it's been awful actually so i <laughs> i actually got covid um oh, no. i was positive for covid on tuesday and i had some symptoms monday like some 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 pretty rough symptoms not like anything like worrisome but like yeah i didn't didn't feel good for sure um and i think on top of like just with the travel day, not sleeping for like 36 hours or whatever, obviously made that worse. So yeah, I, the first few days, I mean, I was all over the place. I was jet lagged so badly. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Jet, jet lag with COVID. I can't imagine. Yeah, that it, feels wasn't, good. it wasn't great. Man. Um, well, sorry to hear that, but I'm glad, glad you were home for that. Glad you got to kind of get some downtime and recover. Um, you're taking this week off. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. That was always the plan anyway, either way, but with COVID, yeah, I guess I'm forced to now. <laughs> yeah. Um, so let's, let, let's, let's get into Budapest. Uh, you know, you kind of, <laughs> you were swimming at the front of the meet and the back end of the meet. Um, I want to start with that 50 back just because it was such a whirlwind for us. I can't imagine what it was like for you. Can you take us through just swimming the 50 back heats, semis, and then obviously the everything that went on with the final that day yeah so um <clears throat> honestly it was i mean a pretty standard meet for me i guess i mean not really I, I i learned from my from what i messed up in the past like in 2017 50 back was at the very end of the meet as well and i kind of <clears throat> didn't really know how to deal with like trying to keep my strength up, I guess, a little bit as much all the way out through me. Everyone struggles with that. I mean, that's a long meet to like to be ready to go at the end of it. And I think the 50 backs honestly showed it a little bit. I think across their a board, the board, they were kind of a little slower than what people might have been expecting, especially with how fast the hundred was. But like, you know, the hundreds at like the beginning of the week, it's a different, it's a different day than that. But uh Anyway, for me, I actually lifted once, like a super light lift after the foreigner free relay, just for a little pop. And, you know, I came out of the pre prelims, felt like a kind of like a normal 50 back for me. Um, and as far as the finish goes, my, my prelims finish, I didn't think anything of it. I mean, I've, I've had a long finish forever. Um, I've been doing that backstroke finish forever. And I think... People, I don't, I don't think people always understand how early I actually I'm touching the wall when I'm underwater, or whatever people always see like, Oh, you're underwater. It's like, Oh, I have really long arms. I touched the wall a while ago. <laughs> I just was submerged after, but, um, the semifinals one was definitely a bad finish. Definitely, definitely super long. And yeah, there was some, some rumblings about my, my disqual, you know, getting DQ'd or something for semis and, uh, they would have been valid because that was not a good finish. But I think because of that finish, maybe I, I got looked at closer or flagged or something. I don't know, because at finals, it felt like they were looking at a video review specifically to DQ me instead of letting like an official call. I don't know. It, it just felt weird to me because I finished. And then like, I don't know, three, four minutes later, then I'm getting told I'm getting DQ. You know, why am I not? if you're going to DQ somebody, you, you better, you better make the call like on the spot. You don't let me see the results <laughs> for like three minutes. You don't let me get in front of that interview stand and be like, right. Oh wow, I got DQ'd. Um, so, that, I mean, that just felt, that just felt like a weird process to me, but you know, I guess they were, they were just looking at it real as quick as they could. And they decided that split second that it was a DQ. And, um, I, I, I felt like that was probably my best finish of the meet actually uh so when i went back to 
but you know, I went back to the team area and it's like, they don't, they don't really overturn those. So I had lost, I mean, I had lost all hope, like, you know, Lindsay and Todd were like, don't worry. Like we're going to protest it. Like we're going to see what we can do. And I'm already thinking that it's done. So I'm just in shock, completely shattered in the team area for 20 minutes. And I see the, the award ceremony going on on the TV and I'm like, all right, well, that's it. Like, they're not going to overturn it now. They're doing the ceremony for it. <laughs> that's weird. Thing that's what too. everyone was thinking. Yeah. yeah. And then like, I'm not even kidding. They hadn't even finished walking down from the award ceremony. And I got word that it got overturned and I was like, well, that's just super awkward. Right. <laughs> I mean, yeah, but I mean, that's just, and then, you know, after that, I was still paralyzed. Like I still couldn't even comprehend what was happening, I guess. Uh, but, you know, then Hunter, once he got back, heard that, gave me his medal. He was, I mean, he was amazing through all of it. Like such a great teammate through the whole process. So it was, it was cool to be in that situation, I guess. Unique, unique situation. Yeah. I mean, <clears throat> t- yeah. Talk about a whirlwind, right? Like, and just the timing of it seemed so weird and, you know, you want to give everyone the benefit of the doubt or of like, you know, we're just trying to do our best or trying to make the best decision on a, on a split second. But it seems like if there was a call and review, maybe, maybe get another medal ceremony going instead of that one. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Uh, Yeah. That was that that was bizarre to watch as a you know just as a member of the media who were trying to report on it. And it yeah, very weird. But so you so but that was something I didn't realize. You know, you had a long finish. And uh, to be clear for anyone listening, the DQ was called because you were the the call was that you were fully submerged on your finish, right? Yeah. Um, Okay. And so just, just to make that clear and uh, obviously it was overturned. So now getting to sit with that for quite a while, um, how does it feel to be a world champion in that after going through all of that? Yeah. Well, it definitely took a while to, to settle in. Uh, Honestly, even after the, that I had like my own individual award ceremony, but it just, it didn't feel real, honestly, until a few days ago when I'm sitting in my room and like, I wasn't doing anything specific. I was talking to one of my friends back in Raleigh and I just looked at the medal and I was like, I was like, Holy, holy shit, man. Like I just, I won world championships. And like with the mix of everything going on in that DQ, it kind of made it harder for it to seem real, I guess. Uh, but I, I, I finally feel that way now. Um, and I know that my finish wasn't a DQ worthy finish. So I'm <laughs> completely, I think it's completely validated uh maybe i'm gonna have to go look at a way to to change my finish i don't know just just to make sure um but i don't know it, it's tough i've been finishing like that my whole life i mean i've always had a long finish because i've just been taking advantage of my long arms so but you know whatever we'll see, <laughs> see right i mean <laughs> sorry i'm tall <laughs> yeah that's what i'm saying if i well the thing is, man, if I take another stroke with my arms, I'm going to jam my fingers in there. Like it's, I don't know. Uh, well, I'm going to have to figure it out. You know, I go back to the drawing board. Sure. It is sure. What it is. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, and not only were you an individual world champion, you were world champion as part of the foreign free relay at the beginning of the meet. Um, how was it having that extra, that extra one day of competition um, to, to kind of get yourself into the meet? Yeah, that one day was actually everything because I, I've i always loved relays, even at meets, uh, like my freshman year NCAAs, even at meets where I suck individually, my relays are always solid, always on point. And to have that at the very beginning of the meet before any individual, it just helps gain so much confidence uh, because not only did I did it, was I on the gold medal relay, but I had two great splits so that you know, I even bettered it at night. Um And honestly, the coolest part about it was, was being on the relay with Ryan again, I'd say, cause that, I mean, I don't know if there's anybody who can say I, my roommate in college, like not just teammates and my roommate, I lived with him for two years. We were on a world championship relay together. That's really cool. It's exciting. Yeah. And I mean, yeah, not only that, but a a gold medal one, right? Yeah. Yeah. 
yeah. that's that's really great um so i and, and then uh let's let's dig a little deeper into those five days you had between the 400 free relay and the the fifth i guess six days five or six days between when the 50 yeah. back started sunday on day seven. To friday morning yeah five days <laughs> yeah um yeah. What, how, so how did you spend that time? You know, what, what was the training? Like, I know you said you, you got in a quick lift, um, just to feel some pop. Um, yeah, honestly, it was for me, it's just a matter of not focusing on the race too much, trying to keep my mind from, I'm a warrior, you know, try to keep my mind from, from being on the race, getting my nerves up for no reason. I, you know, I had five, it's a huge break five days. I don't need to be thinking about the race five days out. Um, and that's the hardest part about the big breaks in the middle is I, I, at least for me, I wouldn't say it's the training or the physical side. It's the, okay, my next thing is the 50 back, but that next thing is so far away that I don't need to stress about it right now. Um, and it's really hard to do at a meet like that because everybody is like all in on swimming. That's the only thing there is at that moment is racing. Um, so the only thing else I can do is sit in the hotel. Right. Um, and really, I mean, I was binging shows, you know, like I finished Kenobi in the, with Ryan and Trenton in the middle there. Um, but really it's just trying to keep my mind off, off the race. I bring my, my gaming laptop, have a, have a little distraction. Um, but yeah, that's, that's really it for me. Uh, keep, keep some pop going, maybe some starch or something like that in the middle, but yeah, just relax, stay calm. That was my, that was my goal. Yeah. And then in terms of just the race execution for the 50 back, um, do you have a stroke count you try to hit? Do you have a rate you try to get up to? Um, I, I know it's just a 50, but what, yeah. what are you focusing on for that? Um, the 50 back is a special case because, uh, half the battle is not hitting the lane line. That's half the battle. Uh, um, but for me, uh, one, one Oh is a good turnover. That's kind of how I train for the 50 back is focusing on a one Oh turnover. And lately, um, a big, what I've had to pay attention to is off the start, not over spinning. Uh, because when I was younger, when I wasn't as strong, it, it was harder for me to kind of like, I mean, I don't know how to put this, but now I'm a lot stronger now. So if I really just ramp it up right off the start, I'm going to slip way too much because my, my, my arms are going to just rip right through that water without getting anything, any pull or anything. So the first 25 or so, I'm just trying to stay a little bit calm before I just start kind of spinning, uh, mm -hmm. keep the, keep the stroke count at one Oh, but yeah, that's really the only two things I focus on. And the third one is not trying to hit the lane line. <laughs> <laughs> yeah seems like good goals yeah um, you know you know it's it's weird like all the other strokes have a line at the bottom of the pool why don't we get like a little wire especially outdoors man you know how hard a 50 backstroke is outdoor it's impossible you're like you're gonna hit the lane line there's no chance yeah uh, that's a good that's a great point yeah give us a little <laughs> why, wire <laughs> right we have the halfway wire we have the flags but like let's get some yeah some vertical <laughs> ones going <laughs> uh let's yeah we should we should make that happen um do you do things specifically in practice like on a day-to-day -day basis that focus on the 50 back um yeah yeah i'd say a lot of my power practices are all all done at 50 uh 50 pace 50 pace i mean <laughs> what do you call 50 pace really just try to turn over as as fast as you can basically um yeah i don't i mean i don't know it's my my training's really nothing fancy i mean it's like a lot of race focused stuff uh just make sure i have that pop going that's that's really yeah that's all i can say i mean i swim three thousand a day like i'm not out there cranking what i do mostly is most of my work honestly might be in the weight room and uh outside the pool just making sure i'm staying healthy probably the two biggest things for me when, when do you feel like that? Like every time I talk to you, I'm just like, this guy used to swim the mile <laughs> to her backstroke. Like, yeah. I can't, I can't forget that. Um, and because you look like you would be a distance swimmer too, right? <laughs> You're like super tall and long. And, yeah. um, 
so when did that become kind of the focus of of outside the pool taking care taking care of things there in terms of health and strength um honestly it's just learning from failure i mean my senior year i was i did not have a good ncaa ways i was unhealthy overweight ate like shit um i mean my uh <laughs> my dad actually just uh actually wrote about my whole journey i guess over the past few years it was crazy how, how much how much detail and every little thing he remembers about you know all the journey i've had and part of it was noticeably not taking care of myself outside of the water when I was in college my senior year um and really just learning from that failure and that's kind of just where my career has taken me the last three years I mean I'm 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 back to going best times almost every time I swim which is really crazy um something that a lot of pros will just don't do and obviously I'm going to get to a point now again where I'm not going to have best times every year uh but really just once you learn, you know, once you just have that, that one thing to take you to the next level. And for me, that was taking care of my body. It it really has shown so far. So I'm going to keep doing that (laughs) as long as I'm swimming. So was it your senior year of college? Was it just kind of a lack of awareness on your part that, that you, you know, weren't eating healthy or because you had obviously been successful in the pool up to that point. Um, so w- was there something going on or was it just kind of like, Oh, I, I don't pay attention to this or I don't think about swimming when I'm not actually in the pool. Yeah. I think it's, it's kind of a maturity thing, kind of like a, like a self self care, self love kind of thing. Uh, things you that are really vital to being an adult, just self-respect, self-awareness. That's honestly the biggest step from college to to being an adult, I think is, you know, you've, you've dealt with a lot of responsibility, you know, how to be responsible, but really just making that come with it within yourself instead of like, you know, outward things like, man, I'm getting philosophical right now, but, uh, you know, my senior year was just, it was just at a time where I was so, so comfortable doing things I'd done my whole life. Like when I was a distance swimmer, like, you know, when you're swimming 8,000 yards a day, of course you can, and you're in high school, of course you can eat all the crap you want. Right. I mean, (laughs) but recognizing that when you get older, that stuff changes and it changes kind of in a hurry. I mean, it was, it was a quick change for me to, to kind of process everything and realize, Hey, maybe I can't eat like shit every Saturday night and still swim fast, you know? Um, and it's not like I wasn't swimming relatively well. I was still swimming fast. I mean, I was, I was in a finals at NCAAs. I mean, that's, it's an impressive thing. Um, but it just wasn't where I knew I could be potentially. Um, and just had to give a great deal of self self-reflecting and, and recognizing, okay, I'm, I'm still kind of a child right now. How, how can I mature? How can I grow up? Uh, and that was taking care of myself outside of the pool. So then once you got out of college, um, I mean, I, you had, you had been to world university games. You, you had been on the national team. You went to world championships, won a national title in the 50 back. Um, what were you for sure going to keep swimming? You know, were you like, okay, I'm, I'm going to do this professional swimmer thing now. Um, because from the outside, it seems like you were kind of in that boat of you could still keep going for it, or you could just kind of call it a day and, uh, pursue something outside of the pool. Yeah. Um, it was a really tough call. So a couple things actually kept me in the sport, uh, just momentarily. Uh, the main one was ISL. Uh, I was finishing up college. Um, what year was this? Yeah. Okay. So after NCAA is my senior year in 2019, uh, Jason Lezak called me and wow, I was so starstruck. That was the coolest thing that that's maybe ever happened to me. But uh, he called me, told me about ISL, told me about Cali Condors. And I was like, wow, that, that sounds cool. I mean, that sounds awesome. And like, that's still, that's still my dream for swimming. That's still why I want to keep swimming personally, just because, I mean, think about how many basketball players are like kids, like eight-year-olds are like, wow, I want to grow up and I want to be in the NBA. Of course you want to be in the NBA. It's the NBA. Like it's a professional league. Like you get to, 
you get paid to play a sport, you know, you get paid to do something you've loved your whole life. Right. And of course there's that, um, side of it for international swimming, but you know, as an American, those, those meets are hard to get to, you know, there's no guarantee that I'll ever make another international team again. You know, I mean, those are hard to make. Um, so I saw just kind of having that just a little more financial incentive for me, just really kept me going and have that team atmosphere back again was honestly revitalized my career for sure. Just being like, wow, like I can still be on the team professionally. Um, so that kind of kept me in it. Also, I got invited to the FINA champion series meet that they did. I mean, whatever, those were just, I mean, honestly, that was just free money for people who got invited to them. Like you can't turn that down. Um, so yeah, I went to that one and, uh, yeah, it was kind of just, I just kept swimming better and better from there. And I was like, well, I'm not going to retire yet. I can still go faster. <laughs> so that was just kind of the three years have been like that. I'm really sad that the, I mean, the FINA champion series to me obviously seemed like just an ISL knockoff, but yeah. it was pretty awesome. <laughs> it was much, cool. Yeah. Much, yeah. Like it was like heats of four people yeah. just dueling and, uh, yeah, there was a lot of money involved yeah. for the athletes and <laughs> it's pretty awesome. Um, <laughs> so I don't know, maybe they'll bring those, I, they won't bring it back, but <laughs> you can, you can hope. Um, yeah. so, so yeah, so you keep getting faster and faster. So I, that brings us to, um, now, because I want to ask about mission Viejo and your move there. Um, you're training with Jeff Julian, and his pro group there. Um, so, uh, obviously I'm guessing you met Jeff through the Cali condors, but can you tell us about the background there and why you ultimately decided to make that move out to California? Yeah. Well, it, so it was a journey. Um, this most recent off season when, uh, December came, January came and I was already planning on taking a huge break thinking about retiring. ISL kind of started, faltering and they weren't paying us and you know uh, all the stuff that that comes with the isl uh and i really just thought after that two-month break i had you know i i went not even touch the water in december and i was swimming like twice a week in january i thought okay i know for a fact that if i if i want to keep swimming i i can't keep doing it at nc state you know i've been here like six and a half years it's just it's just one of those routines that, that you just can't keep doing forever. You know, you have to change something up. Um, so I knew I wanted to make a change at that point. Um, you know, some, I was thinking about going to Todd, going up to train with Todd in Virginia. And really, I, I didn't, I didn't really have that many options. I didn't think because coming from NC state, a relatively low volume, uh, training, uh, especially the sprinters, we don't swim that much. And that's not how, a majority of of coaches do it um so there was a kind of limited options uh when fina postponed the world championships originally i thought okay so i have a ton of time now this would be a great great chance to uh to check out jeff's group in, in california because i've always loved southern california always wanted to live here and jeff just put the group together like two weeks ago he messaged in our cali condors group he was like like hey i'm starting a pro group whatever uh, we'll do training camps or something. And I was like, wow, that sounds so cool. Like training in Southern California, you know, and then two weeks later, I'm like, oh shit. Like, I, like, what if I moved there? Um, so in February, after hitting an all-time high 250 pounds uh, at the end of January, which is uh, 35 pounds up for my race weight, I uh, went out to California and I was like, hey, Jeff, like I'm like, I don't know. I don't know what else to do. I don't know if I'm going to keep swimming, but I want to check, I want to check this out. Uh, and of course, as soon as I got here, like three days later, immediately fell in love. I mean, I don't know if you've ever been to the Mission Viejo pool, but like, it's beautiful. Like there's absolutely nothing better than that training wise. Um, it was a very quick decision that I, that I wanted to move, move down here and it was going relatively smooth. I was going to be able to take my time, whatever, get out here sometime early summer. But then FINA uh, added the world championships back and I was like, oh gosh, man, what am I going to do now? So I was like, okay, I'll go back 
to NC State. I'll train. I'll train in Raleigh through through trials. See what happens. Like I won't be expecting anything. But I got back to Raleigh, and and I couldn't go to the pool every day anymore. I mean, it was too tiring swimming. And, you know, at this place I had been really for 20 years of my life. Cause I, I swam in NC state in high school. Sometimes, you know, uh, it was just the same, the same thing over and over routine gets tiring, stuff like that. So, uh, I was home for about a week and a half after coming back in California. And I was like, told my family, told Brayden, I was like, listen, I got to move to California like right now. <laughs> So four days later, and I pack as much as I can into my car and I drive across country with my dad. Uh, and it was a, it was a three day journey. We went 17 hours the first day, 12 hours the second day, seven hours the third day. And wow, that got so exhausting, especially in my car, which is not the most comfortable car. Uh, it's a little fast sports car. So it's meant for for driving fast, not long. <laughs> uh, so it was an exhausting okay. trip, but I mean, it, it was all worth it. I got here probably about a month before trials and I was like, okay, Jeff, like I'm, I'm going to go for trials, but like, you know, there's not going to be any expectation there. Um, so whatever, basically that month is just trying to get in shape rather than like really train. Uh, and I get to trials and, and immediately off the bat with a hundred free, I go like a best time in the morning, I think. And I was like, wow, okay, this could be something else. And then, you know, when I finished six, it was kind of all downhill from there. Yeah. What? I know. <laughs> I, I was, I was, I was not ready to race. I, I was not even anywhere close to race shape until March, like early, late March or something like that. I don't even remember when trials was April. Um, but yeah, it was, it was a quick turnaround for me. I mean, I, I hadn't swam in two months, December or, Jan or January, and then quickly, quickly came down. <laughs> Man, it's, did you have any meets from like December to trials? So I had uh, the smock meet, the Sumita champions. Okay. I swam 50 back. And then I was too exhausted to swim the rest. Of, like I, I literally did a prelim 50 back and a semifinals 50 back. And I was like, Jeff, I'm like, my body cannot handle more racing right now. Cause I was, I was not in race shape. Um, <laughs> that, it was nope. a decent, I mean, it was a decent 50 back. I was 24 seven, uh, which is okay. But then, um, <laughs> then two weeks later I did a hundred free time trial just at the pool. And that was, that was pretty decent race 49 one. I thought I was going to die, but it was still a fast race. Uh, and that was two weeks before trials. So two weeks before trials, I could barely finish a hundred free, even at, even at trials, honestly, finishing races was tough. And by the end, by the end of the meet, the 50 free, I had nothing left. So I, I scratched the 50 free at night. There was just very obviously nothing left for me. <laughs> I was going to say like, how did you, I mean, cause you went three best times at trials, right? It, well, like it's in three events, right? Yeah. You best times in all, all the events you swam. <laughs> Yeah, it was an anomaly. I have no idea how it happened. <laughs> <laughs> what did what did Jeff have to say about it? Uh, I mean, he saw it coming. I mean, he just saw the. You could see how much how much power I was generating in practice was the main thing he was saying, and I think it's just a matter of honestly reaching my my natural strength peak. You know, I'm not there yet. I mean, a lot of guys don't get it until they're 27, 28. You know, I could I still have a few more years of just naturally getting stronger. So trying to use that natural strength, uh, to my advantage rather than wear it out by, by wearing myself down training, you know, allow myself in training to get into race shape rather than break you down, break you down, break you down, you know, mm -hmm. just a different, different way of, of, of training older now don't need, don't need all the yardage. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. So, um, in terms of training with Jeff, just how, it, what, what has that been like in terms of the, the work you're doing or the sets you're doing? Do you have training partners out there who do your same sets as well? Um, so currently uh, we don't actually. So right now it's uh, the pro group is David, David Heron, the uh, open water guy. Mm -hmm. um, Victoria Gunez was here for a couple months. She's a four I or two I am -er, And um Taylor, I forgot Taylor's last name, but Washington State swimmer. She's also training down here. So that's the pro group. None of them, none of them do the sprinting. So don't have any training partners from them. 
but some of the college kids who whose parents live in the area who are here for the summer come back and a couple of them do sometimes do what I'm doing most of the time not though but um yeah so I don't really have training partners but uh sorry what was the question again <laughs> there's no question so you don't have training partners, but what kind of, what kind of work are you doing okay. um, yeah, on yeah. a day-to-day basis? Yeah. So the, as far as the work goes, it's just getting back to like, uh, honestly, it's like getting back to, to tenant under, tenant under training, uh, you know, focus on a, a lot on the details and then, uh, you know, we warm up, loosen thousand, whatever, 1500. And then a lot, a lot of the times I'll have like a, like a detail set where I'll do a lot of drills, um, basically work on what I need to do in the race, uh, but at like an easy speed, right? Um, I mean, that's the point of drills. And then after that, after that drill set, we really get into executing, uh, executing races and focusing on implementing those details in a race. Um, so it ends up not being a lot, a lot of yardage, but the work we're doing is, is really important work. Um, so pretty much, Um, my aerobic practices will be 3000 to 4,000. And then some of the, some of the pure power sets, I I won't go over 2000. And then, you know, a lot of the, the hundred speed, 50 speed kind of unresisted sets, that's will be right around 3000. So, you know, at any given day, I'm not really going over three K not. So just, just detailed focus training. Yeah. I mean, that, that sounds um, similar to at least some of the stuff I saw you do at NC state. Um, mm-hmm. but obviously, like you said, new environment, uh, new location, new coach, new set of eyes, um, you know, all that makes sense. But would you say it's like comparable to some of the things you're doing at yeah. NC state? Yeah, it definitely is. I mean, especially with Braden the past two years, I mean, I've been swimming great with Braden for, for the last two years. And, and if I hadn't been just so done being, you know, swimming in Raleigh, being in NC state, I would have kept training with him for sure. Cause it was going so well, but really it's just an evolution of that. Um, and my training will just keep, keep evolving as I get older, you know, as you get older, you're not gonna be able to do the same work. That's just a fact, you know, so you got to figure out other ways to do it. And right now it's just, uh, focused on evolving that, that workload and it's working really well for me. Yeah. yeah. So, so what, what now? What, what are you doing for the rest of the summer? Do you, I'll leave it there. What are you yeah, doing for the rest of the yeah. summer? So, um, I I'll be at nationals. Uh, I'm not sure how much I'm going to swim or what I'm going to swim. Uh, I want to go to do on the pool. I don't know. We have the selection procedure, but like, it's kind of all over the place with who's going to go, who's not going to go. Cause a lot of people, a lot of top swimmers don't know yet. Um, uh-huh but I'd love to go and do go to duel in the pool in Australia. I mean, I've never been on Australia. I think that'd be so cool. Um, but if I don't get invited to that, I'll start, I'll have a pretty big break after nationals. Um, and if I do, I'll take my pretty, pretty, uh, pretty big break after duel in the pool. So after one of those, I'll take a, a pretty big chunk off probably like a month or so. And then I guess looking forward after that, do you have any plan focus, you know, do you, do you, do you guys know world championship <laughs> procedure for like short course worlds or for 23 worlds? Yeah, we, we don't, we don't yet. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, that's going to be interesting to figure out. Cause I don't know yet. I do at least know 2024 is, is 100% in the cards right now, just because I'm having so much fun with swimming right now. Even if, if ISL doesn't come back, uh, I think the world cups, something I'm going to do this fall for sure uh worlds would be awesome short course worlds would be awesome i love short course always get love the opportunity to race there um as far as after 2024 goes you know without isl for me personally i i i don't know if i can see myself swimming you know doing usa swimming that long i mean it's just such a stressful you know having having to make the international team to kind of be financially stable for a year that is a stressful thing to deal with that i don't know if that's in the cards for me that much longer uh but you know if i sell if i sell came back and was thriving man i'd, I'd swim till i'm 35 40 like i don't you know i do i sell for so long you know i'd be one of the old guys in swimming i'd be like santos in the 50 fly 
at worlds <laughs> this year i would well i would 100 do that man i mean i love i sell so much my fingers are crossed for it <laughs> Um, I mean, we love ISL too. I as some fan love ISL. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm in your boat. I'm really hoping it's, it's going to come back, but yeah, we'll it's see. Tough. It's going to be tough. It's going to be tough. You know? Yeah. Uh, well, Justin, I appreciate you taking the time to sit down and chat. Uh, I, it's, it's been really great catching up with you and hearing your perspective on the last couple weeks and couple years, honestly. Um, and anything else, any parting thoughts before we sign off today? Mm. I would just say if any kids are watching, always remember to have fun. Don't ever forget that that's why you're doing it. <laughs> have fun, be with your friends, enjoy the time. That's how you're going to swim the fastest. You've been listening to the Swim Swam podcast. Stay tuned for new episodes every week. You can take Swim Swim Podcast on the go by subscribing on your favorite podcast platform. Look for links in the description below and be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more videos as well.